Um, this is all for Jesus, but it's also for you. Um, a month ago, seven years ago, uh, we became Lifeline Church. The church was already in existence, but we changed the name to Lifeline because we wanted that to be our identity. We wanted our name to match our identity and to match our goal, to match our, our mission. So that became our name. It became our goal. And we came up with like these four phrases that are like a spiritual journey of sorts. And I'd like to take a moment to to give you those because there's so many new people today and you, you might have seen them before, you might have heard this before, but every once in a while I like to just remind us of what this is supposed to be like. This is a great time, by the way, I'm going to start to like give you some things you can remember. So if you want to take notes, it's a great time to start doing that. If you've got a bulletin walking in, you can take notes like that. Or if you want to open the YouVersion Bible app, the coolest little Bible app that there ever was, great, a great way to have a Bible reading plan and you can even make Lifeline your church in the YouVersion Bible app and see what's going on in the life of the church. It's, it's a cool thing. You can also take notes there by going to the events tab, and you'll see some of these things I'm going to share with you in that app if you want to get that, or if I'm talking too fast, you'll get it for next week. It's going to be great. So we have four phrases that, that kind of describe the spiritual journey we, we would love for people to go on, and the first one is that people would know God that they would know him, like personally, like get excited to actually have that relationship with them. If you've never experienced a life-giving relationship with God, where you wake up kind of like, yeah, he's for me. He loves me. He cares about me. Like a life-giving church or a life-giving relationship with the Lord your God. Maybe you never even thought God of being that way, of like being so close, of being so passionate, of being so caring about what you're going through. You've never experienced a church that way. Maybe you think, God is that way, but you never experience a church that way. We would love for you to know God and really get to know him personally. Once you do that, you can do this second thing, which is to find freedom, which another way to say that is to find community. Because oftentimes we'll find freedom when we find community because that stuff that's in our life, that's messing up our life, would just things would get a lot better if we got that stuff out of our life and we got some freedom. That happens in the context of community so often. So we want you to know God. We want you to find freedom. But we also want you to be equipped. Be equipped by discovering your, your gifts and discovering your purpose. Once you discover your purpose and your gifts and how God designed you to make a difference in the lives of others, life gets really exciting, which is our last part of that spiritual journey, is that you would be a lifeline and make a difference in people's lives. When, when all those things are firing, I'm just telling you what, when I see anybody go through those four steps, they, they get to know God, they find freedom from the things that are holding them down, they discover their gifts and talents and how God specially wired them to, to move in, in the things of the Lord, and then they, they really start seeing that they're making a difference in people's lives, it, it'll change you. It'll change you. And so we don't just want to play church around here. We want, to, we want to take you on this spiritual journey. I'm inviting you. So especially if you don't have a home church or anything like that, I just want to invite you into this process, not to just attend here and, and warm one of those seats, but to like actually experience knowing God truly, fully, and experiencing that freedom that we want to offer you. I just want to invite you into that because it's, you know, it's the end of the year. Right around the corner, 2024. Can you believe it? Oh my gosh, it's crazy. But it's a great time to make some new decisions. It's a great time to take some, some new steps, make some new choices, and have a, have a fresh start in life. Amen, everybody? It's a good time for that. And so I'm, I'm in inviting you to be a part of that with us if, uh, if you're looking for that. So the Christmas message, it, it would be inappropriate if I talked about anything else, right? Let's do a Christmas message today. Let's talk about the Christmas story, Christmas message, come on. And I just have one thought about Christmas. I want to keep things kind of simple today. It comes out of the book of Isaiah, and actually, this fella, Isaiah, who was a prophet, this actually occurred 700 years before the manger, before the whole nativity scene. Isaiah saw the manger 700 years before it happened. He saw it. And then it goes a little something like this out of Isaiah 9. Okay, out of Isaiah 9, it says, For a child is born to us, a son given to us, the government will rest on his shoulders, the government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Ooh, that sounds good. All of that. And maybe you've seen that before. You've seen it on your little Christmas card. You got like a whole shelf full of Christmas cards right now that have that verse on it. I'm, I'm just guessing. I don't know. But look, what I want you to see about this is that Jesus, this, this Lord, this guy, this King, he's too awesome for just one name. All right? It cannot be contained. 
God cannot be contained in just one name. Jesus cannot be contained in just one name. He's, he's too awesome for that. We've got to have more names for him. And anybody who's a parent in the room knows how complicated it could be to name a child. Come on. Anybody in the It can be a little complicated to name a child. You know, you're like, maybe it's your first. You're like, man, what am I going to do? Well, if, if, it, if you had a struggle with it, I don't, I don't relate because I did not struggle with that. Yeah. I did not struggle with that. In fact, when, when Tiffany and I were expecting our first, we found out, and then shortly after that, we went to Disneyland, separate occurrences, okay, we didn't find out in Disneyland, but we were there in Disneyland, and, and I, had, I had a premonition. I had a vision from the Lord. This child of yours will be a, a girl, and you are to call her name Elizabeth. And if you're laughing, you know my daughter. <laughs> Okay, and so I, I, you know, being the informative, inclusive husband that I am, I I let my wife know what our daughter's name was going to be. Her name will be Elizabeth, to which she replied, no, it won't. No, it won't. But Emma's middle name is Elizabeth, and so if she is a God-fearing woman, she'll end up going by Elizabeth later on in life. I heard somewhere you got to honor your father and mother after you honor your father. <laughs> no, no, no. It could be a challenge to name your kids, you know. Um, I've, I've heard of a, of a family name, um, last name uh, being Man. So, like, their last name was Man, M-A-N-N, last name Man, and they named their daughter Anita. I need a man. I need a man. And some of you ladies, you're like, that's my name too. I'm just, <laughs> don't raise your hand. It's not that kind of church. All the single people come to the front. No, don't. Just kidding. That's, I need a man. I need a man. Uh, it's not that funny. It's not that funny. It's kind of funny. Not that funny. I heard of another name. Uh, I heard of another last name, a family named Price, and they named their daughter Lois. Lowest price. I heard they got a great deal at the hospital. That's so, that's so dumb. I'm sorry. I couldn't resist. I couldn't resist. What I want to tell you about Jesus' names, they're not poetic. They're not a joke. All right? They're not fantasy. These names for Jesus are his actual, actual being. This is actually who he is. And they're, they're, these names are supposed to be true in your life. He is your wonderful counselor. You know what a counselor does? Knows you so intimately and is there to help you. That's what God wants to be in your life. He wants to be your wonderful counselor who knows you inside and out. He wants to be your mighty God. That's who he is. And I know some of us got some things in our life that only a mighty God can take care of. You got anything in your life that you can't take care of in your own strength? How about a mighty God that would be able to move that mountain for you. Come on, somebody, anybody, or is it just me? And the everlasting Father, you know, God sent the Holy Spirit to be with us all the time, to give us comfort, uh, to, be a, to be with us. And how about this last one, peace, Prince of Peace. Oh, the one thing that everybody's looking for is peace. And we look for it in all the weirdest places, all the, the places that promise peace. We, we look for it in, in drugs and alcohol. We look for it in addictions. We look for it in wrong relationships. We look for it in companionship in those wrong places. We look for it in all different kinds of ways, but we find out, hopefully, later in life, and maybe you find it out today, that true peace only comes from the Lord, that it's only when we fully give ourselves to him. That's who he wants to be in your life. He wants to be your prince of peace, the place where you really get peace, that no matter what else happens in life, you can have peace. Amen. That's right. Amen right there. I love it. I love it. But how? Like, that's the real question, right? Like, uh, maybe I do know God. Well, where, where are those names? I need those names to be activated in my life. Well, guess what? It's in the Christmas verse that I just read. I'll show it to you. Let's go back to Isaiah 9. Isaiah 9, starting in verse 6, it says, For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, the government will rest on its shoulders. The government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Then it goes on, verse 7. His government and its peace will never end. And he will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor, David, for all eternity. What's, what's up with that word government? It's like twice. It's like his government. Talking about government? No, it's not talking about government. It's talking about like the essence of, of governing. Let me tell you something. Uh, being a pastor over 10 years, and I know what you're thinking. You don't look any older than 25. How could you be a pastor over 10 years? Well, just, just believe it. Just believe it. My birthday is coming up, but it's none of your business how old I'm going to be. It's okay. Being a pastor over 10 years, being a pastor over 10 years, I've, I've seen this. People love friend God. They love friend God. They love savior God. Hallelujah. They love a denomination. They love their church. People love, but a king? 
someone to rule over me? Uh, I'm not really looking for that right now. You know, I'm not really looking for the go- go- a governing body, someone who's going to actually call the shots in my life, someone who's actually going to less so. Less so do I find that. People love Savior. People love friend. But less so do people want them to be, want him to be Lord. But let me put it to you this way. You will never get the best of God without giving your best to God. And what that means is giving him permission, giving him control over your life. You give him your, your full self, your, your complete self. This is where his names take effect. This is when we get to reap all the benefits of who God is, is when we do that. That he's not just a friend God, he's not just a savior God, he's actually my Lord God. That's when he becomes counselor, father, mighty, is when we make him Lord. This is the great disconnect in the spiritual pursuit that I see and I notice in the lives of people. People are looking for God. They're looking for spiritual wellness, but this is like kind of where it disconnects and people don't, they don't see it. That, that until you go all in, you won't find him. Until you go all in for God and say, God, here I am. You can have all of me. Until we do that, it's just, it, doesn't really, it doesn't really work. It, this whole thing, this whole Christianity thing doesn't work. Well, we need to go all in and give ourselves fully to him. L- listen to this in Jeremiah 29, 13. It says, if you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. That's a key word, wholeheartedly. Because, I mean, we could look for him, you know, but, you know, I'm just online today because, you know, slept in a little bit. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not shaming. I know you're watching online right now. I don't mean to say that. But we got to look, we got to be wholehearted about this. We have, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed that we're able to, to broadcast this out. And I'm blessed that we have made every allowance possible for, to just make, to make it as easy as possible for people who are far from him to come to him. I'm glad about all that. But I, I do you a disservice if I tell you anything less than full surrender will get what God has to offer you. It's full surrender. It's what, it's, because I want you to have that. I want you to know God. I want you to find freedom. I want you to discover your purpose. I want you to be a lifeline. And those things happen when we go all in. It's through finding him. That's where fulfillment comes from. Listen to what Romans 10, 9 says. It says, if you openly declare that Jesus is friend, if you openly declare that he is like nice to me, the bringer of all good gifts. No, we got to call him Lord. That's when we're saved is when we call him Lord. And believe in our heart when God raised him from the dead. So why am I making a big deal about this on Christmas? Like, hello, I thought you were going to say Christmas stuff. Ho, 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 like some kind of thing. Like, make some points out of that, okay? Well, I'm making a big deal out of this because I, I believe people are expecting things from God without giving themselves fully to God. And I want what's best for you. I want what's best for you. I want you to experience this. I want you to have this. I'm, I'm inviting you into more. I'm inviting you into better. I'm inviting you into not fake. I'm, not, I'm inviting you into not surface, but the real deal all the way on the inside. So the Christmas story actually informs this. And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about the Christmas story from the book of Matthew, which is strange, by the way, because the book of Matthew Christmas story has less manger and less stable and more magi. Magi, who's that? The magi, like the word magic, but without the C, magi. These people, the magi, were the furthest people from Jesus imaginable, both geographically and spiritually, all right? These were pagan priests, astrologers, all right? They were, they were worshiping their own deal. They were way far from God. Yet, this pattern that we get to watch them go through is the pattern that you and I go through when we go all in. It's really actually quite exciting to look at. When we let all of ourselves go, we go through this pattern, and and I'll explain it to you out of Matthew 2, 9. It says, after they had heard the king, talking about the Magi, after they heard the king, they went on their way, and the star, remember they're astrologers, the star they had seen when it rose, went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. Listen, God could have used anything to draw them in, but he used something that they understood. I want you to notice the compassion of God. That God is very, he's very compassionate to people who are far from him. He's not going to be like, well, you better get it, get it right my way and follow the cross. You know, well, these are astro- pagan astrologers. And he says, you like stars, don't you? Why don't you follow the star then? I, I, I noticed the compassion of God to reach people who are far from him. I was far from him and God reached me. And so I, I like that kind of stuff. I like, I like seeing that in the Bible. He's, he's so compassionate. 
And if you're not where you want to be, the first part of this pattern is, if you're not where you want to be spiritually, there will always be a star to draw you. Like a star-like moment. A star-like moment to draw you in. I'll tell you briefly about my star-like moment. Um, I prayed to a God I didn't even know was real. I got saved as an adult, like I explained briefly. I, I, didn't, I was in the throes of my addiction, and as a young adult, I was you know, in trouble with the law. It's a long story. I don't need to go into all that, but, but I was far from him. I was like these magi. I was, I was pagan and into all kinds of things that shouldn't even really be discussed, but yet I, I, I shot out a flare prayer to a God I didn't even know was real, and it was like God drew me and just led my path to, to find my way here. This is my first church, by the way, like the first church I ever attended. It's amazing. He drew me in. He rescued me. And he's given me everything that I have. And since then, I've just been like, long story short, I've given everything to him. I've given everything. It doesn't mean I'm perfect. It just means I'm perfectly aware that everything I have has come from him. And I'm just so willing to like, hey, I, I didn't have anything before that. So that was my star moment. I wonder what, what yours is like. It's probably not like mine. It may be, but... Your star, I want you to be on the lookout. Like, how is God trying to get your attention even right now? Is he getting it today? Is he drawing you in? How is he drawing you in? I mean, and, and things are going good. You know, maybe you have seen the star. You're kind of like coming. You're like, all right, God's drawing me in. And usually about this time when things start going good, that's when Herod appears. Okay? The, the Christmas story goes on. Herod appears. And in Matthew 2, verse 3, it says, when King Herod heard this, he was disturbed. But he wasn't just disturbed. He tried everything in his kingly powers to try to derail Jesus from saving all of the population in all the world. And what I want to explain to you in this pattern is that once there's a star to draw you, once God starts drawing you in, there's always going to be a Herod that's trying to stop you. There's, I've seen it over and over and over. There's always going to be something gets in your way, something breaks, maybe a relationship breaks down, Maybe like, just like your car breaks down. You're like, oh, no, well, what's going on? What's, it's, there's always a Herod to try and stop you. There's always a Herod to try and stop you. Things that try to hijack your progress to God. Maybe you had a bad church experience. Maybe you have a struggle with some theological item. You know, I, maybe you've, you know some weird God people. You know? <laughs> Hopefully not here, but they're everywhere. They're everywhere. Maybe even valid concerns. Like, let me just tell you, I truly do empathize with all of that because I wasn't raised in this. I wasn't raised in church. So when people are struggling, I, I tend to just go, you know what? I, I feel you. I feel your struggles. I feel the fact that there feel, there's barriers here. I don't understand everything. And I empathize with that greatly. I really do. Maybe there's the last few years, you just drifted out. You know, maybe you're not like on the edge of that. Maybe just because of your last couple of years, you know, COVID happened. You know, things got a little weird and you just kind of drifted. Maybe you know, I'm speaking to Christian people too. There's always going to be a hair to try and stop you. But the Magi kept going. And look, look at this in Matthew 2, verse 11. It says, on coming to the house, the Magi got there. They, they came to the house and they saw the child with his mother Mary and they bowed down and worshiped him. They opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. There's two things they did. They, they bowed down, which, which is a universal sign for I surrender. I, I surrender. These are, these are pagans. These are people far from God. These are people not worshiping God. But once they encountered the real Jesus, boom. There's, I have no, I have nothing. I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm, I'm bowing down to worship you. And then they gave. They gave everything they had. They had valuable gifts. They, and that was everything they had. But here they are in a far away, distant land, and they gave it away. They said, you know what? I'm going to put my chips on you. I'm making a big gamble here, but I'm making it on you. I don't even think it is a gamble. I'm just going all in. They bowed down and they gave. And I, I, I'll put it this way. I think they truly, truly found God when they gave and surrendered everything they had. Like just, it's right there in the scripture. And I'd say this to you, anything less than full surrender, you'll never truly find him. That's why I see people struggling, man. And they're, but, but I know they're keeping themselves at bay. They're keeping God and the church all at arm's length. And they're like, why isn't it working? And I'm like, I'll tell you why. Because you have to go all in. There's going to be a moment for all of us. This last part of the, the process is there's all, there will be a moment where we can bow down and make him our king. There's going to be a moment where you can bow down and make him your king. And I'll, I'll just like pull the curtain back. This day was planned. 
This day was planned. This, I mean, it's, it's Christmas time. This, this day was planned for you to have a moment. For you to have a moment. We want you to have a moment. We want you to have a moment. We want you to meet him. We want you to see him. Maybe this is your time to make him Lord, to find him, to bow down. I'm even talking to some Christians. Like maybe you're a, a church person and you've been around, but you haven't been all in. And a change is necessary. Something needs to happen. Something needs to give. You're guarded. There's a gap between you and God. You know him. You know about him. You know you're supposed to, but there's just a gap there. I, I feel for you. I love you. I got to tell you this. When I give my all to God, I receive God's all in me. That's, that's as simple as I can make it. When we, put our, when we go all in, when we give our all to God, he'll give his all to us. Last verse, and having been warned in a dream not to go back, these are the Magi, not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Once they encountered Jesus, they returned different. Once they met Jesus, they returned different. Now I know, oh, that means they returned, but they returned by a different road, pastor. That's what that means. Don't take it out of context. I know, I know it means they went by a different road, but I believe they returned different on the inside as well. How could they? They surrendered all. They gave all to Jesus. They couldn't have returned any other way. I believe that's why they're such a key part of this story, the Christmas story. They returned different. They returned changed. They returned brand new. I got to just tell you, I'll just be honest with you. I've been praying for this moment for, for a long time. Like six weeks, I've been thinking about Christmas nonstop. I've been thinking about this service for about the last six weeks. And I've been praying. I've been praying for you. I've been praying that this would be the moment, this would be the day where you go all in. Because that's where life is. That's where life is found. It's almost 2024, but let's decide today, right now, that 2024 is gonna be the year of complete surrender. Let's just decide right now. 2024 is gonna be my year for complete surrender. I'm gonna go all in. I'm gonna go all in in prayer. I'm gonna go all in in reading my Bible. I'm gonna go all in in serving and in attendance. I mean, what would happen if you went all in for God? You think things would get better? I'm, I'm promising you they will. I'm promising you. I'm making a guarantee that they will because I like to make guarantees that God makes. And God says, if you look for me wholeheartedly, you'll find me. And so we have this statement around here that says, give us one year of your life. Just one year. 2024, year of complete surrender. And I'll, okay. All right, pastor, I'll do it. When the doors are open, I'll be here. I'll sign up for your life groups. I'll go to your, you know, I'll come to church. I'll do the things. I'll give one year. And maybe that's your attitude. It's like, I, what do I got to lose? I'll just go all in, I guess. I'll just do it. I'll do it. I'll go all in. And I'll just tell you this. I've never had someone come back to me after a whole year. We've had people give testimonies about this statement and doing it, going in for one year and how it changed everything in their life, literally everything. But if it doesn't work for you, we'll refund your old life to you. (laughs) You can have it back. (laughs) It'll be there waiting for you. It'll actually probably be calling to you anyways because there's always gonna be a hair to try and stop you, but I pray that that star is brighter now than it's ever been before and that you would go all in, that you would go all in. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. You will not be disappointed. You'll be more fulfilled than ever. You'll be more satisfied than ever. He will be your counselor, your mighty father, your prince of peace. I want this for you so much. And so right now, what I'd love to do is I'd love to pray over you. Um, I'm gonna pray for two groups of people in just a moment, people who maybe you know God, you're acquainted with God, and it's, it's time for you to come back to him. Or maybe some of you that have never really on the inside of your heart made that choice on your own. And so I, I just love to pray that over you if that's all right. Uh, if you would bow your heads and close your eyes with me. I wanna pray over those two groups of people. The first being that if you've never really made a decision for God, you've never really had it explained this way, you've never done it for yourself to, to say, I, Lord, I'm going all in for you. I'm gonna give you one full year. I'm gonna do all the things and and we'll just see. I'm gonna look for you with my whole heart. If that's you today, I'm so excited for you and we're about to pray a prayer together. But I also wanna speak to people that maybe you used to serve him. You used to be really close to him. Maybe you used to even be involved in church and do all the stuff, but somewhere along the line, your heart just grew cold 
your passion for the Lord just grew cold and you know you're not where you should be, but you're ready to come back. I want to talk to you like the prodigal son that, that when the prodigal son even started coming back, the father came running, running to them, running, so excited, no guilt, no shame that you would just come back. So if that's your heart in any way, if I described it in any kind of way, I would just love for you to pray something like this with me. Pray something like this. Uh, I don't want you to repeat after me. I don't want you to raise your hand. I don't want you to do anything. This is actually I'm going to do it a little different. I just want this to be between you and God. I want this to be, be between you and God. Just say it just something like this. Say, Father, I just give you my whole heart. I give you my life. I, I, I welcome you into my heart. I welcome you into all of me. Lord, I give you, um, I open my heart to you. Forgive me of my sin. Make me new. Lord, change me from the inside out. Lord, I just welcome you in and I give you all of me. Thank you for being my Savior. Thank you for being my Lord. And I give you now the Lordship of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Can we applaud those that made that decision today? I'm believing that many of you did.